God morning. I pray that the sunlight of the Spirit is already pouring all over you. Another amazing day in our Lord, our unchanging God. We cannot improve upon you, Jesus. You can't improve upon yourself. You're perfect. <laughs> He's perfect. He's perfect. Timothy 2.5 says, There is one God. One God. And there is one mediator between God and man. And that man is Jesus Christ. It's that simple. There are not multiple gods. There is one God. Now, there's three in the one, like we talked about, the water, ice, and steam all being different, but yet all being the same. And it's the same with our God. How cool that our God is in relationship with himself, that there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that all three are in relationship. So God loves relationship because he is relationship. Have you ever really thought about that? It's mind blowing. Today I am going to focus on an attitude of gratitude because the actual act of being grateful is an act of worship. It is an act of worship to be grateful because the things that we're grateful for, God created. So when we're saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our Lord, we're actually worshiping him. I love that. That just helps me feel like I want to be in an attitude of gratitude all day long because I want to worship him all day long. You know, I think that would really help me with my constant connection with God to be in a constant state of gratitude. It frustrates me so much throughout the day when I catch myself feeling separated from God, feeling detached. I think to myself, well, how did that happen? A couple hours ago, I was praising God and I was feeling the Holy Spirit and I was feeling so connected. And now, just a couple hours later, I'm feeling empty. I'm not feeling the Spirit. I think to myself, am I a part-time Christian? Like, is that my problem? I'm not a full-time Christian. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I just think that I'm human. And I think that is part of the reason why I can feel so on fire and so in the Spirit. And then a couple hours later, I feel so fleshy, just fleshy and human. And I think that is natural. But one thing I do know is that I love the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, because Jesus wrote it himself and he gave us direction on how to pray. And so when one of his disciples asked him, Lord, how should we pray? He said, the Our Father, it says in the Our Father, it says, thy kingdom come. And thy kingdom come to me is the fruit of the spirit moving through us but also a childlikeness a childlikeness getting to the point of humility where we actually feel like we're little children like we are little children and i love that and back to feeling connected to god more full time instead of part time i think is getting more in touch with my childlikeness and our childlikeness together. We can do that. We can try through prayer. It's actually not of our own volition and strength. It's through asking the Lord to make us more childlike because children are dependent, totally dependent on their parents, right? On their mother, their father, their caretaker. So the same for us. We need to be completely dependent on Jesus. The more childlike we are, the more dependent we're going to be, the more we're going to ask, and the more we're going to be in his presence. <sighs> yeah, childlikeness. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna be like a little babe in the woods with you, Jesus. Sometimes people will say to me, how can you trust the Bible? How can you trust the Bible? It's so ancient. It's been rewritten over and over and over again. And it just makes me laugh because I think to myself, right, but you open the New York Times, read the New York Times cover to cover and believe every word and you read Newsweek magazine, Time magazine, and you trust it, you trust it, but yet you're not gonna trust the written word of God. You're not gonna trust the Bible, which has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and has been painstakingly translated and written down and copied over the centuries. I mean, people lost their lives if one word was translated or copied from original texts incorrectly. So people's lives depended on how accurate 
they translated and transcripted the Bible. Romans 4 says, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. In newness of life. Every day there is newness. The Lord says, the word says, put down your old self and pick up your new self. Every day we put down the old and we pick up the new. Newness of life. There is newness of life today for you, for me. There is newness of life. And every second we can experience that newness. Every second we can be inspired. Every second we can be in the spirit if we choose to be, if we choose to be. So it's all brand new today, guys. It's all brand new. It's a perfect gift. We just got to open it and experience the newness today. That's it. Romans 5 says that through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience. And I think to myself, obedience, like that sounds so scary. Obedient, be obedient. That just sounds harsh to me, that word. But I just know that the one thing God wants from us, no matter how scary that word is, the one thing he wants us to be obedient to, the only one thing, and that is to love Jesus. To love Jesus. It's that simple. We just have to love our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is easy. Just love Jesus. That's being obedient. That's true obedience, is just loving Jesus. Yes.